Okay, so um, I think I'm going to take over the lead for today because I think um, the usual host uh, seems to be um, not able to join. So, okay, I'm going to share the document in the chat. I hope everyone can hear me okay, by the way. I can, is it, is it me? I can hear okay. you. Um, is it just faint for other people or I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe my volume's just really high. Yeah, you know, no, it's kind of faint. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to, to increase the volume somehow. Is it better now? Still better? Yeah, it's better. <laughs> I just, just don't want to uh, increase the input level to 100% or something like that. Because I guess then it gets very noisy for everyone. Okay, so um, what I wanted to say is I am going to share the document for the meeting notes for everyone. So that everyone please fill in your attendance on that. Um, and without further ado, so I don't uh, rob you of more of your time than necessary, um, I would say welcome to the QBERT community meeting, uh, 2nd of March, 2022. Um, first of all, um, I'd ask anyone who is first time here, probably if he wants to introduce himself, uh, now it's your time. Hi, this is a Brad Solar from Mainsail Industries. First time here, um, but user of Kubert for for a little bit of time. <laughs> Great, welcome. Yeah, Thank welcome. You. Have you um, signed our just out of curiosity? Have you uh, publicly said that you are using it in our adopters file, Kubert? No. Is that on the doc uh, you, you uh, put in chat or is that somewhere on the site? I will link you to it right here. We'd love to have you, uh, if you are willing to uh, contribute to this document as an end user, if you are an end user, uh, sure. and maybe give um, some information about your use case there. That's always Alpha for us uh, with the CNCF as we go, like graduate from incubating to GA and things like that, uh, and it and it gives a little bit more traction to the project for people to see more adopters. Yeah, be glad to sign. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. Hi, my name's Andrew Bird. Um, I'm from Red Hat. Uh, this is my first Kubert community meeting. Um, it's been a long time since I used Qubit, but I've used the downstream CNV, uh, OpenShift virtualization, uh, for, for a little while. Um, yeah, and, and, and don't mind me, it's just like one o'clock in the morning at the moment, so I'm a little bit like half present. Oh, oh wow. Thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, where, where are you located at one o'clock in the morning? Uh, I'm currently in Brisbane temporarily, but uh, I'm normally in Barcelona, but I'm here for a couple of months because our, um, our borders have recently opened, so we're able to return home and see family and stuff. Ah, I see. Well, welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, then. Thanks, everyone. Um, I don't yet see any agenda items. Probably. We'll wait another minute, probably, if someone wants to bring something up.
if nothing comes up, maybe Brad would like to share about his use case like online or before we get it as a pull request to the adapters page. Sure, not a problem. Um, you know, we've been looking at it for um, really edge computing use cases. Um, we're, we're more looking towards, you know, US um, um, DOD type of use cases. Um, and we see that there's a, a lot of um, people want to go to containers, but a lot of their existing workloads are still virtualized. And what we're looking at is, you know, how to, you know, put together solutions that can utilize kind of best of both worlds. And I think Kubert kind of falls definitely into that. Yeah, sounds exactly like the right place to be here. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that's cool to hear that. That's that was our theory very early on in the project that people would encounter that, and we keep seeing that it's being proved true. So great. Okay, then. So next one is uh, Philip Schwander. Schwander. I'm sorry. I hope I pronounced that right. Oh, Schwanter, uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I'm used to it. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No problem. Yeah, um, I, I just want to bring up uh, on this meeting that I'm uh, actually started uh, to work on, on the vhost support. Uh, vhost is uh, another type of interface uh, for the VM. It's, uh, it's a high performance uh, interface, something like uh, SRVO. However, it's different. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's meant for uh, local um, local high high speed networking because it's using uh, in memory sharing uh, of data. So basically, uh, the, the use case uh, that I'm having is uh, basically a one node Kubernetes uh, cluster, and I I try to. I can I can share if if I can I, I can show you a picture uh, of of the use case of what I'm working on if, sure. if you like uh, you, you could you could you could also if you want just uh, add a uh, link to a pull request into the document if you want um, so that we have that um, I'm okay not sure I... if you're already with uh, if you already have a PR ready or something or if it's still in early early stages it doesn't matter. It's not. It's uh, actually. Um, it's actually an out pull request, at, and it's not mine pull request. It's uh, something like a resurrection. Ah, okay. So, uh, so basically, there is uh, there is some uh, support uh, in in this pull request for vhost um, vhost interface. However, um, the problem with this pull request is that it has no uh, CI test. So basically, it's unmergeable right now. And I'm not um, solving this issue actually. However, I, I get the pull request. I, I try to set everything up uh, using using the using the development um, uh, setup of Kubert using using kind uh, where is the Kubernetes and Kremu uh, uh, and everything. And I try to uh, try to change this uh, this Docker environment, this kind environment for uh, developing Kubert uh, to actually uh, set up uh, the uh, the vhost interface uh, interacting with uh, VPP. Uh, basically, this pull request is uh, try to connect the VM via vhost and and the OpenVSwitch, but I try to do it the same with with VPP. That's a virtual switch. That's a alternative to, to OVS, uh, the open v switch. Uh, however, uh, from the Kubert uh, perspective, it's the same because uh, the, uh, the, the, the setup uh, is done through a socket. So basically, it doesn't matter uh, if on the other side is VPP or OVS for, uh, for the code of, uh, of uh, Kubert. I will probably share the picture so you. Sure, if, if I can allow you somehow. I don't know, to be honest, how that works. But does anyone else know how? Yeah, can you, you can, can add, add as yeah. a co-host if you haven't taken. Well, I'm not sure if you're 
keep on. I just joined and I don't think I am host here, so I'm sorry for that. If you have the host pin um, at your, you can um, make yourself a host and then you can add a co-host. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm it just crashed, so probably I won't be able to share the picture. Unfortunately. Well, yeah, what, what you can at least do is uh, probably send something uh, to the Qbert dev mailing list, for example, so that you can share it, so that we can discuss it at least. So if, if you are not able yeah, to Yeah, there, there is an open, open thread to this. Oh, okay. uh, I can find it. Um, yeah, but uh, I, I want to just um, like say uh, what I'm doing there, what changes I'm doing mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the development environment. And, and basically my uh, ultimate goal is of course to set it up uh, and, and to do my use case. However, um, I, was, I was fighting with, uh, with all of this like uh, three to four weeks to get it up and running because uh, I'm also new to, to KubeVirt and uh, some stuff around it. So basically I wanted to share the, the setup uh, with the world. It's, 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 uh, when when I finish it, it will be uh, a little bit ugly, so it's not uh, in, it's not in a state that I can merge it into Kubeird as an example or as a nice example because uh, because I also, I made a lot of uh, hacks, uh, dirty weighting. Uh, it depends on on the user space CNI that is setting the vhost, but the user space CNI doesn't support VPP in such a way that I want to have it. So basically, I all, I did a lot of dirty tricks, which make it uh, very uh, not nice to to merge it somewhere. However, I can I can uh, open source it uh, on on some fork uh, somewhere and then and make a link uh, just just to help others to 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 start quickly with vhost because uh, there is no no example. Uh, uh, for this to be used, there are some there are some documentations uh, in the PR in the original PR because uh, there was a PR, then it was closed, then it was resurrected, uh, then it was closed again, and and stuff like that. So basically, the setup could help uh, uh, new people that try to use the vhost to to start up and not not to waste weeks with some uh, crazy setups. That that's my uh, immediate. Um, uh, uh, immediate uh, goal. However, uh, I was also noticed uh, uh, by Miguel, I, I think uh, that's the one uh, here, uh, that, uh, that maybe uh, we can use uh, such a setup uh, as some kind of testing or, uh, or, or something like that, because something like that was uh, done for a SRVO. So I don't know uh, whether this is a viable option, not to use the CI, but to use the uh, development environment uh, to test uh, the functionality. So uh, yeah. that's not, not the question whether this is not a viable direction to go. I think maybe this might be a reasonable contribution to the uh, Kubernetes CI project, which we are using internally for testing our stuff. So there are a couple of other setups. I'm just going to share the link in the chat probably. I'm not sure, I guess that you already saw that, right? Uh, I didn't properly check all the stuff in the CI, okay. but yeah. something I saw, yeah. So, okay, yeah. In general, how CI works, I guess that you also know that, but I'm just to recap a little bit. Uh, we are spinning up clusters that are running inside virtualized um, VMs or VMs that are running inside Docker, which make up our cluster. And um, I think the, the similar thing is for our kind stuff. Um, we have a couple of kind setups, for example, for SRIRV and for VGPU testing, uh, which we also use just to test those scenarios. And I guess that your testing also falls into that category where we could probably set up some kind stuff inside the Kubernetes TI um, so that you have your testing environment um, ready, so that you can, so that we are able to uh, to set to test that in cube in, in Kubert as a separate lane, for example. So um, I could probably, if you want, you could just um, 
ping me via Slack, for example, and Cube Dev. Um, and then I might be able to show you around um, if you want. Um, the thing is uh, that the priorities right now for me are to, to set it all up, um, make uh, make the use case that I have because it, it's a project with, with some deadlines. However, mm -hmm. in the end, when, when the project is successful, I, I, we definitely want to uh, uh, to push the, um, the merge request and, and to help with the CI cell. So after that, we definitely want to, uh, uh, to explore the option to use the uh, development environment with the CI. But until mm -hmm. then, it's probably not necessary to, to dig deeper into this. But I am definitely want to, uh, after I want to uh, dig into this op um, uh, option. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, one thing. One thing I'd like to say about this, uh, and to Philip, like if you can, like, um, you don't need to have something right now that works. Not that it does not work, but you don't have to, like, push the entire thing that works end to end, like with tests and all that. If you can just like provide uh, a simple uh, GitHub gist that people can use, and as you said, that will prevent them from wasting weeks trying to figure out a correct configuration or how to use the pieces they have available right now, that would move the, um, the status quo forward quite a lot and would help uh, lots of people, I guess. So if you can do just that, we'd all appreciate it. Uh, r right now, I have uh, I have some dirty working uh, solution uh, for uh, for making pinging between between the uh, VM and VPP. However, not using the TPDK as I wanted, but using the Linux kernel, so it's not finished. However, it's uh, quite dirty, and uh, I want like a little bit a uh, little bit, make it a little bit nicer and, and to write for, thank, for example, the gist. Because it's Take really, time, really dirty. Time. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm I, not pushing you. Take I, I, I want to publish it. However, not right now in this moment. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you too. Yeah. Thanks for the work. And, and like I said, every, everything is appreciated. I'm not exactly familiar with uh, with the VO scenario, but I think this has, of course, value. Um, yeah, and let's follow up on that. And like I said, just uh, just ping me anytime if you want something to have properly set up some Qubit CI stuff. I, I'm really happy to help on that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I tried to fi uh, find uh, uh, the Qubit dev email thread and, and post it in the chat in the meantime. So yes, anybody can check. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, okay, so um, anyone else, anyone? Does anyone else have anything to bring up during the open floor? Ah. Miga, thank you for the mail thread. I think that is the thing that Philip wanted to point us to, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, at least I think so. Philip, if, if you could confirm this is the, um, the mail thread. Uh, it's not in chat for everyone, I think. It is. I don't see it. Oh, no, I've added it to the meeting document. Oh, all right, OK because that lives forever. OK, so um, we don't have any pull requests that need attention at the moment, as I see at least from the list. So I'm going to share my screen. Let me see. Where is it? No, I don't want to share my desktop. 
I just want to share this one. Okay, so I'm going to try to make it a little bit more comfortable for everyone. I hope that you can still see everything. Please chime in if you don't. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the mailing list. Why do we see something that we need to handle? Okay, last one was Ryan on February 25th. Okay, so I think then, yeah, this one, right? This is the video supporting keyboard, okay. Yes. And then also the mismatch between keyboard and video, close issue, okay. So I think all these are relatively old. So I don't think we have to handle anything here. So let's see, next one will be the box crop. I think we did a pretty okay box crop last time, but let's still have a look at that. So, okay, this is something by Petter. Yes, this is a tracker. This one looks, let me see. This is my report, I think. With ARM, ARM and AMD 64 nodes, interesting. This is a mixed cluster. I can't see the next sense of this. I think I would need to take a closer look to decide what we would do. Oh, there is a question. Oh, okay. okay, I see. We're not. <laughs> We're making some assumptions about what container to deploy, uh, and it's in inaccurate uh, in a mixed cluster. Ah, so you're saying we are we are deploying the ARM version or uh, the AMD version for an ARM uh, node, or? Uh, <clears throat> well, that's what this uh, this code snippet essentially leads me to believe. So is the vert launcher version, I, I don't know what the handler is crashing. Maybe we, maybe we have mm -hmm. one blanket. Um, I'm sure we do that as well. So we have one daemon set and it's going to be uh, one version or the other as far as architecture goes. Likely, I don't, I don't uh, think we designed for that. Uh, in the same interestingly way, enough, yeah. sorry to cut you off, David. Uh, interestingly enough, I saw like uh, on the Yelp stream Slack, a user mentioning, I mean, speaking about this as um, like opening a feature request to to allow this. I'm not sure uh, where I could paste the link for it. But yeah, if I understand correctly, it kind of wants to 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 have like nodes with different architectures and uh, deploy a VM indicating like the architecture of, for it in the spec and that Qvert should schedule it to the correct uh, node. Yeah, I think that would work no. today as long as we deployed, well, we, we don't pick the right architecture is the problem. Yeah, but the scheduling yeah, would that. just be a node selector because I think exactly. we already have, uh, the nodes already advertise their architecture, probably, I think they do. Well, so, so it, I'll take you in um, I'll tag you in um, in the thread, so if you could kind of um, uh, chime in there as well. Okay, I'll try. Ping me offline or uh, in a different, um, like on Slack or uh, Google Chat if, if I don't respond. I'm, I'm kind of overwhelmed with GitHub lately. The pings go. Oh no! Yeah, okay, okay. Don't, don't worry. I'll I'll, I'll um, tag you on uh, on the upstream Slack. Okay. Thanks. So at least what we can conclude is that we can accept this, right? Uh, yeah, we'd certainly be open to this. Yeah, it, sure. It's a difficult scenario to test, but um, we'd definitely yeah be open to any changes around there. Yeah, that, that's true. To, to create an integration test for that would be very tricky. <laughs> okay, but at least I'm going to accept this. So, 
Okay, interesting. Okay, so next one would be, okay. Oh, sorry, wrong one. No, this, this one, that is, okay. Run strategy, rerun on failure. Hmm. Interesting. It cha it's changing the run strategy. Yeah. So if you have rerun and failure, then you stop it with like vert CTL stop. What that does is it sets the run strategy to halt it. Mm -hmm. Now if you start it again, uh, uh -huh. I think it might set it to always again. Um, mm. That's my guess. I'm not sure if I, I don't know what to think of this. Uh, so I feel like halted and always are, are kind of our default. If you're going to be using uh, vert CTL, probably what should be the default um, for start and stop. If somebody wants to set their own run strategy on start, like start and some other CLI option to um, enforce what run strategy it sets as a result of start, then okay, that could make sense. So I see that there is also a PR that is work in progress on that. Um, I'm not sure if that would be somehow adequate, but I guess, David, that you lack the resources to look at that, right? I can try. I will put it on my list. <laughs> Which is getting ever longer. Okay. It's, I've called bankruptcy on my GitHub reviews in the past few weeks, but I will try to look at this. Let's see. Okay. Great. Should I should I take you on that or uh, you just? Uh, uh, it won't matter. I'll just add it to my notes to look at it. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to um, to just uh, tag you on this uh, on this issue. Um, Just so that we have some feedback for the user who opened that issue. I think that should be fair. Okay, so let's see. Oh, well. Do you tell me where to download or 33 code? Um, okay. I don't think that we delete any branches, do we? <laughs> okay, so this has, of course, resolved itself somehow. I guess that, that was what he meant. I guess I can close this one already. Do you agree? I'm just going to add a note on that. Stated. I should probably do it more friendly. You can easily read these on 33 branch as a V O C T O tag. I don't think that it gets just just to make sure that we're not deleting anything. I'm just gonna look. Branch. So let's see. Yeah, it's there. I've just I seen it. Right. Mm -hmm. 
I would be very surprised if we would. Uh, exactly. Answers, right? <laughs> okay, I'm just going to, to link into this one for and just as an example. Okay, so next one. Poison VM IP change after a cluster restart. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Do we do we track the after cluster restart? Do we track the IP somewhere so that, that they persist after a cluster restart? Um, no, we don't. Pod will always get a new IP. Uh, let's make sure yeah. they're not using, are they using Multis or something or anything that we would, let's go down a little bit more. Oh no, they aren't. Yeah, that's a, that's expected. So just like um, a pod gets a new IP address, um, the, well, are, what IP address are they talking about? Are they talking about the IP address that the guest sees or the one assigned to the, I think they, they are talking about both. So uh, after cluster reboot, pod and VM IP got changed looking for fixed IPs. So I guess that they mean both that they should persist uh, over cluster yeah. restart. That's my interpretation of this as well. Like a kind of an RFE for sticky IPs, which I'm not sure where to take that. Our response has been typically to use Maltus and create your own network. Um, maybe somebody from yeah. the network, do we have a blog post or anything uh, that we can reference? Maybe somebody from the network can comment. I, I'd like to have no, a there's... reference uh, that we can point. This is a really common question. We get it all the time and uh, it would be nice if we had just a, a write up if we don't already about how to handle it. I'm not sure um, what exactly. I don't think we to... have. I mean, the only way I know that you can have kind of sticky IPs here is if you use like static IPM. At least I'm unaware of any other uh, CNI that will like uh, persist the IP across on a, to a new pod. Yeah, I don't remember okay. all the details here. I think somebody can create a bridge, like a host bridge network with their own DHCP and have like a their own Max um, that kind of translates. If to... you, exactly. Right. But so that, yeah, that, for that you you need to have like DHCP, not uh, not IPAM as at least as I understand IPAM. Okay, Miguel, would you would you be uh, able to to follow up on that at, at least? Um, post some short answer on that, what, what they might be able to do here, or don't you have time I that? can, I can, I can, 7284, sure. I'm just going to post the link out to the issue in the chat, if that helps. Yeah, that does, it does, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, I think this one is, this is interesting. I think I've seen a couple of those can connect to WebSocket 504, maybe related to WordCuttle or something. Oh, looks like the same user. Yeah, this is the same user who connect, who couldn't connect to the WebSocket somehow, but I think, and if he has posted three days ago, then this might have resolved itself already. Fixing protocol is working fine. I'm running on AWS, but I'm not just getting error. Hmm. Okay, so let's see if he has uh, posted himself. No, I don't think so. Interesting. Okay, um, I am assuming that he did get a cluster running. Currently created another issue.
is the greatest one in that scale. So we can say does this problem still exist? Okay, so next one. I think this is no. Yeah, I'll make it start. It uses more than 128 gigabytes of RAM. Interesting. Okay. Are very, very specific numbers. Yeah. Interesting. I would say that that you shouldn't uh, create VMs with more than one hundred twenty-eight gigabyte RAM. I guess that there should could be still, uh, of course, a case where you want that. <laughs> um, okay, this is uh, a little bit unformatted here, so I don't know what to make of that. Okay, so could it be a limitation um, of Quem that one hundred twenty-eight or more on that is a problem? I don't know. I don't know either. So, but what I see is an older, older Verge, Verge Cuddle version at least, and Cube Cuddle also one nineteen. But yeah. Okay, so let's see how that looks here. Virtual data volume, cloud image disk, NVIDIA, com GPUs. Okay, so they want to, they want to have a GPU with 129 gigabytes. So looks like they are running on a new Ubuntu on a bare metal somehow. At least that I would guess, because they don't say anything about cloud provider. Hmm, okay. Yeah, in, in general, one could of course um, always assume that that um, you would have some, some kind of integration test, but I don't think that this makes sense here because you can always make it ever bigger and it might still fail, I'm not sure. Yeah, but could also be likely a limitation of the underlying system. I don't know what to make of that, to be honest. Any ideas here? Did they say, okay, will this run without a GPU? Is it something specific? I'd like to narrow it down to like, what's, oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what do we know uh, about uh, this scenario? Does it happen only when GPUs are introduced? some comment on that with this question. I hope that um, adequately described what you what you were saying, David. Yes, just get a little bit more information to try to narrow down where to look. So mm -hmm. that helps. Okay. OK, 
Okay, this is one thing by Marcelo. Okay, I think I need to have a look at that. So next one is by Alona. Maybe this one could be also still interesting. Locate the functions, but this looks more not like a question. Request for internal cleanup, okay. Oh yeah, Lugo already answered and I think then we should be okay already. So let's see. Okay, then I think we're done with our bug scrub, at least uh, regarding the last seven days. Um, so let's have a look. Okay. <clears throat> So any final notes anyone else would like to bring up? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, then um, thanks for your attendance, everyone. Um, have a nice week. I guess we see us next week. All right, see you next week. See you, bye. 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 -bye.